Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Yo, Tech Lead and Partner at West Vault. And today, start of a brand new week. Uh, gonna take another break from COVID-19 and talk to you guys about the subject of Agile. What is Agile? Why is everyone talking about it? And giving a beginner's breakdown of Agile process. Now, again, out there in the market, in the uh, industry, Agile is such a big word. It's the buzzword of 2020, actually since 2015. You have Agile coaches, you have companies that pitch Agile. There are companies that said, we are Agile. There's um, documents, causes, and all that kind of stuff. But what exactly is Agile? No one actually is able to break down into something simple for everybody to understand. Fortunately, you guys are very lucky because I happen to be an expert in Agile, like real from the back, because I picked up statistics in university and uh, operations research, which actually deals in this kind of stuff. So today I have a special uh, structure for this video. We're gonna split it up into three so that you guys can absorb all the information that I am bringing out. Uh, especially my last video with Exponential. Man, that did so bad. <laughs> so bad. Obviously, it wasn't going Exponential. And um, we're going to go point by point as I go across what something means. So, first of all, to understand Agile, we have to take a look at the opposite of Agile. And that opposite is stiff. Okay? <laughs> stiff. Uh, it's not really stiff. It is... Uh, TQM, Total Quality Management, or what you might have known, Six Sigma. This is the opposite of um, Agile. This process happened about, it's very popular between the 70s to the 90s. Uh, that was the big thing. Six Sigma is very, very large. What is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is about delivering quality at the end by controlling the processes before. What this can be summarized into is basically, don't you dare F up, okay? Everywhere along the process, we are going to find people who make errors, prosecute them, reduce variation in the whole system. What does this mean? Think about a space shuttle, right? Every piece of a space shuttle has to be perfect for that space shuttle to fly and land. A single error, single problem, bang, the whole thing is gone. So how do you do that? You look at every part, every widget, every screw has to be a high quality and high standards. And you do that by reducing the, what we call the variance or not trying anything, okay? Really screwing down that quality. Very popular with Japanese cars. Uh, Japan was the forefront runner of uh, TQM and Six Sigma. You have heard the belts and all that kind of stuff. So that's a process management. It's part of what we call management arts. There's not really a hard science rule behind it. There's lots and lots of papers, lots of discussions. Now, fast forward as we get to the 2000s, right? Here's the problem with TQM and total quality, um, what we call variance reduction. The problem is, number one, it's very slow. If you have a whole bunch of process and you're going on improving and making sure each one of these processes is very, very, uh, what we call high quality, low variance, right? It's very slow. It takes ages to get the thing really put together very quickly. The second problem about it is that people tend to be low risk in these environments. Take for example, you work at in the government or something, a single problem you're going to get prosecuted. They'll go through the chain. They find who was the one who did it, identify you and prosecute you. So everybody starts taking very little risk. Innovation is stifled. It's slow. It's killed. The third area is that it's very expensive. So to keep everyone's watching their backs being very slow about it, very expensive, very rigid, very high quality. Remember, if we were talking about uh, Six Sigma, we're talking about 99.9999. So to one error, someone's in trouble for that. The final part, two major things that are very interesting about this. The final part is missing the market, okay? 
So what happens is two areas. One, it takes so long to get your process out that the market has changed. You want it green. Now, when you deliver green, the market wants blue. Very, very unique uh, problem to TQM, missing the market. The other thing about it is there's no way to find out what the market really wants. So take you back to uh, iPhones. Uh, nobody, everyone said, hey, we don't want touch screens. How would you figure it out? You have to build a whole process and then figure that out. So you need a lot of guesswork is required in TQM for the final and it's legendarily missing markets, like missing uh, the market entirely. The market may say they want this, they do sampling, they get it wrong. So, and then the last part about it is that when things go wrong in TQM, it is catastrophe wrong. That means we are missed. If you get something wrong in a space shuttle, it is wrong because everything is all fixed together. You can't change any of the components in there. So when you face with this and we forward to 2020, uh, tw the 2000s when software came about, right? Obviously, we can't develop software the way it's been developed 40, 50 years ago. This is very slow. And then the internet has allowed us to forward changes. So breaking down what Agile is, Agile is process by uh, iteration. Process by iteration, okay? So what does this mean? Simple trial by error. Getting something out, testing it, fixing it, coming back again. And who are we getting out? Who, where, where is this trial happening? It's not happening in the sample area, it's happening in the live, uh, what we call the production market or the real market or something like that. So this gives you a couple of advantages. One, you're actually getting stuff out very, very quickly. You're getting it into the thing, you're getting it to the users, you're looking at certain um, features that users can experience. Two, you're getting feedback directly from the market. It's not a hypothesis or not a guess or not some idea that someone came out with. You're actually rolling out. So if people said, look, they like clamshell phones, you bring it out to the market and they, no one buys it, okay, problem solved. We don't want clamshell phones. So Agile is that process of by iteration, getting something, bringing it back and improving on it. Now, why does this work so well in the software business? There's a few things. One major, the major factor here is the internet. The internet allows us to push updates nonstop very quickly. So we can iterate very, very quickly. Number two, very cheap, uh, what you call delivery costs. Software has zero uh, so-called fixed cost. It's not a car, it's not a space shuttle. We can roll this out, we can make changes very quickly. So this type of industry is very ripe for agile and agile processes. So you can take all the advantages, uh, all the disadvantages of uh, TQM and put in all the solutions and benefits of agile. So mainly being, if it's not slow, it's fast. If it's, uh, not miss if it's missing the market, we can meet the market. If it's expensive, it is not, not that cheap anymore, reasonably inexpensive, okay? Per dollar spent. So that's the first part of the Agile process. That's the bottom line. I'm the tech lead, and that's what the tech lead said so.